Well, if anybody's been paying any attention out there, <laughs> you know that Florida just got clobbered. And it's an interesting because it got, inter it got clobbered on the 18th anniversary of our closing on our property here. Right. Now, right. we don't have hurricanes here. No, but we have to pay attention to them. That was one of those little details that the news around here is not really good about telling you and that I haven't found many local people who figured it out, which I find it interesting. Uh, and I think that sometimes that's the insular nation, nature of the area. In other words, people, a lot of the old people who are gone. Uh, a lot of the newer people haven't been here through any of the big storms. So they think they know everything. Wrong. The worst storms we've ever gotten here in terms of rain were when a hurricane hit Baja and then the moisture just came in across Arizona. And those were the storms that gave us two or three sessions in a week of four inches in an hour. Well, let's talk more generally about, about preparedness. You know, Florida, we have a number of YouTube friends who live in Florida, mm -hmm. and what we've always encouraged them to do is make sure you have a week or two or more worth of food. It may not be fancy food, but make sure you have it on the shelf. Yeah. Make sure you have water mm -hmm. that you can drink on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Those basic things about living. If you live in an area where you lose power, like two million people in Florida, mm -hmm. have a generator, but make sure you know where to run it. Don't run it in your house. Don't, you don't run it in your garage. Yourself, yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't want to you don't want to end your life by running a generator in the garage. There's food, there's shelter, there's medical, mm -hmm. there's all manner of preparedness. Mm -hmm. And we think that everybody everywhere in the United States should have basic things on the shelf ready to go. We have friends who live on the East Coast who when the pandemic first started, you could not convince them that food was in short supply. It was becoming in less supply, mm -hmm. supply was reducing, mm -hmm. and that eventually you were going to have bare shelves in the stores. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing about that is before every major storm in New England, like when we used to live there, you, if you heard there was a storm coming, the first thing we always did was double check our stuff because if you waited till the last minute, you'd get to the grocery store and there wouldn't be anything available on the shelves because in the olden days, supermarkets had warehouses behind them. They would have a lot of back stock. So they wouldn't get in one case of canned green beans. They'd get in a whole stack of cases and they'd have a space that they could keep those in in the back. Most grocery stores don't have any warehouse space now. Yeah, their warehouse is rolling warehouse. It's in a, on a truck going from a distribution center to the store. Right. And that's, that's really where the storage is for food in most, in most grocery stores. So it doesn't take, like here, for instance, wintertime, you'll get a series of storms that will come across, snowstorms, that will block the interstates, Trucks can't get through. You know that when you go up to Williams, which is on I-40, the grocery store is going to be empty. Well, let's talk about medications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we're both older. I'm the only one who actually has to really be on medication. She's healthy. Mm. I'm healthy-ish, but I had an accident, and so I have a medication that I need to take to function normally. Mm -hmm. So. If you, if you have a medical condition that requires you to take medication, you need to make sure you have enough. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you're like most people in most locations, most pharmacies and most insurance companies will only allow you to have... A 30 day supply at the most. And when you get down to the last seven days, that's when you're eligible to, to get so, more. We just decided to go ahead and pay ahead. It's just not worth it to us to have to deal with that stuff. And we have to drive 45 minutes, assuming the road is open, 
you know, I mean, it's one of those things, assuming the road is open, you know, we can get to one in 45 minutes, uh, sometimes 35 if there's no bizarre goings on on the highway. Mm, that means no, don't hit any stoplights. Yeah, don't know his no stoplights, no anything, and you can, but but you know, oh, and, and everybody's speeding. And you're trying not to <laughs> That's get run the real over. thing. Uh, so you have to you have to plan ahead. You can't have just what you ba barely need. I know it's hard to spend the full price for an extra uh, load of you know an extra cycle of your of prescriptions. But if there's any way you can do it, figure out how to do it. Because, you know, and our, we have a sane physician who would have no problem prescribing extra stuff for us just so that we wouldn't have that kind of an issue. Yeah. Uh, if you have somebody who's part of a system, it sometimes can be more difficult. A lot of times we found that our insurance, our best bet for the price of pharmacy pharmaceuticals was actually using something like Save RX or... Uh, or good, good RX, RX or one of those other things, we were getting a better deal through that than we were through our insurance. Yeah. So besides uh, medications, prescriptions, you need to know about what other things you'd need over, let's say, a week. Mm -hmm. So do you take uh, an over-the-counter uh, decongestant? Mm -hmm. Do you use an antihistamine? Do you use uh, eye drops? Right. Do you use nasal lavage, you mm -hmm. know, what kinds of things do you use on an ongoing basis? Right. You know, make sure you have enough toothpaste. Do you have a toothbrush? Yeah. Um, it's, it's those things. You really need to look at the sum total of what you need to maintain your health. Mm -hmm. Food, water, medication. Uh, can you stay warm or cool? Warm or cool can be tougher. I mean, like where we are, okay, power is not a, a thing. If it's if the power's out, it's our own fault. Well, that's for us. We're we're the power company. It's the it's the first power company of Davis. That's right. Um, so, in the sense that, can we live without power if we have to? Yes, we have done it before. Sometimes we're when the, we're in the process of rebuilding something. You have to have the power off for a while. It's just the way it is. The power does not affect our our. Uh, freezer or our refrigerator or our range top or a range top the only thing that affects the range top is you can't use the oven and that's the one thing i miss about our old range top was the old range top didn't require power to do anything with but it's almost impossible to get those kind of things anymore now the trick here is cooling and we are a passive solar house and even when we get to over 100 degrees I don't think the temperature in the house gets much above 90, even if it's over a long period of time. It can get higher than that. Um, the, the problem becomes if you can't dump the heat out at night. Say if you, can't run can, if you can't run AC, can you at least run a fan? Or a swamp cooler. Or a swamp if, cooler, yeah. If you're in the right kind of conditions. But you know, do keep in mind that if, if you have a problem that makes things difficult in the wintertime and you live in, I don't know, Rochester, New York, <laughs> if you don't have an alternate way of keeping yourself warm, which by the way can include sleeping bags and emergency blankets, there's a lot of ways that you can keep yourself warm. Right. But you, that's, that's really up to you to figure out how you're, how you're going to keep yourself warm when it gets cold. Now, I'm the designated optimist in our family. Irene's the designated pessimist. And, Realist. <laughs> and <laughs> I, cho I choose to look at all those negative things and say, okay, well, I know what I would do if that's going to happen. I'm not going to consider that that's going to happen, but I just know what I'm going to do if it happens. And that's really what you need to do at least is figure out what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And if that means that you need a sleeping bag, for heaven's sake, buy a sleeping bag. Right, you can get things like sleeping bags at, at uh, very inexpensively during sales, and and a lot of comforters and stuff like that. If you go to a, um, a thrift shop, you can get all kinds of comforters and stuff like that that will keep you just as warm as any old sleeping bag will, and you know, cheap because it's last year's cost, co co you know, comforter, and it's not. You know, it's day class A for this year. So, <laughs> so once you have your health needs taken care of and you're able to keep yourself either warm or cool mm -hmm. as best you can, 
then you need to think about how important is electricity to the way you live. Right. If you're a person who needs to have a, a nighttime sleep aid that requires electricity, like a CPAP machine, mm -hmm. you really need to seriously consider how are you going to run your CPAP machine when the power goes off? Because it it's, will. It's not a question of if. It's going to go out. Yeah. Start your thinking on that basis. Right. I'm an optimist. It's going to go out. Right. You know, you if you, there are there are CPAP machines that work work perfectly well on batteries, and one battery will keep them all night. So you can't just have one battery. You need to have more than one battery, and you need to have a way to charge those batteries. So, you know, some of these little generators that we see um, that are, if you're not in a situation where you could run a motor, like a regular power gas generator, motor, yeah. yeah, gas motor, perhaps a solar charger of some sort. Solar chargers are way slower. But if you need to keep something like a CPAP going, you got to think about that. We know people considerably younger than us who use CPAPs considerably younger than us. Like, yeah, fortunately so far we don't require that kind of medical no. assistance. So fingers crossed that we don't need it. Right. Now the next thing you really need to think about is how are you going to communicate with friends and family mm -hmm. when you lose the telephone? Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a child, when mm -hmm. you were a child, mm -hmm. we had this funny thing called a telephone that had a rotary dial on it. And mm -hmm. you, put, you turn the numbers and it took forever to dial an interstate phone number. You dial the th the one for the country that was us, the U.S. And then three digits for the area code, mm -hmm. and then three digits for the prefix, and four digits for the phone. Mm -hmm. That took a lot of time, especially when you had a lot you of had zeros. To wait. Well, you had to wait for the 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 rotary part to go back. It's not like when we switched to push button phones, you could punch the buttons as fast as you could punch them. And, but even with those products. When the telephone lines go down, that communication service goes away. Mm -hmm. Now, if the phone lines stay up, one of the things that's really great about those old phones is that as long as you're not using a battery-operated portable phone, right. you pick up the phone, you're going to get a dial tone. Mm -hmm. Cell phones are different. If, you, if the cell phone tower loses power, it has a battery backup. It may even have a generator backup. That cell tower will continue operating. But keep in mind that when you have a disaster, like a power outage, people are going to be calling their power company or their friends, and it's going to be congested and may be difficult to get a line out. Right. Now, the worst thing is when you live someplace like Florida with a big windstorm coming through, a lot of those cell towers will be knocked down yeah. by the wind, mm -hmm. even if they do have battery backup. Right. Now, we were in Colorado probably six years ago now uh, for an event, and the forest fires had come through, and they fried all the fiber optic cables that provided telephone and cable and everything else. They brought in temporary cell service because that's what people rely on. It's a tourist area, and to not have cell service, and we were concerned about not having cell service because that's how we process credit cards. <laughs> so one of the things you do need to think about is how you're going to communicate with, with friends and family. Yeah. It may be that you can phone. You may not be able to. Uh, you may not have friends or family close by, like next door or across the street. It may be people who live states away. Right. So you need to think about how you're going to communicate before the event happens, and they need to be prepared that you may not be able to talk to them right. for some days. And they shouldn't assume days. that the world has ended. They should just assume that you have no way of calling them. I mean, there is actually a, a pay phone at one of the gas stations in town. I noticed it the other day when we parked at the other end of the parking lot. It's, where we... it's, a, it's a pay phone station that actually has a phone in it. Right. That right. works. Yes, that works. Um, so it's good to know it's there. You know, because if the cell towers were completely down and we needed to just get a message out to people, we could do that. How are you going to charge your cell phones? You know, how long? In our area, we, our cell phones have to be charged every single day, sometimes two or three times a day because the service here is bad enough that it drains the phones down. 
So you have, you're constantly charging over the course of the day. Do you have some sort of a battery backup that you can use that will, you know, we have to deal with that when we go to camping events because I need at least two cell phones, yours and mine, so that we can communicate in case you, one of us has to go off site for something. And it can also be used as a backup for credit card charging. Right. Plus I have an iPad mini that's used for doing the majority of the credit card processing. Those have to all be charged. Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of ways to communicate. One of the things to keep in mind is just because you have one cell phone that works, the person next to you may not have a mm -hmm. cell phone that works because you may be on different carriers. Yep. So one of the things to think about is how you're going to hook up with somebody who might have service. Well, there's a lot of topics that we've discussed here. We've only skimmed on the surface, but right. really this is a point that you should really think about what you're learning from the Florida disaster that's that's occurred. Right. You know, there's a lot of things that you can learn. We have friends who went out and bought a portable uh, battery-powered generator. Mm -hmm. It's just a battery. So they can run their refrigerator. Now, they did that last year or the year before. And, a couple years ago. And they've tried it with their refrigerator, and they know it works. Right. So there's things like that you can do. I, I might say flippantly, it's just a matter of money, but a lot of these things are a matter of money. Right. But it doesn't have to be a lot of money. There's a lot of things that you can do that might be an inconvenience, but you can make them work. Well, it's like it's like we had friend, a friend who moved to Houston area. I contacted her when I knew there was a hurricane coming in because I knew she was from Southern California and probably wasn't paying attention. And she was like, what? And I'm like, there's a hurricane coming. And she's like, and? And I'm like, you're going to lose power? You're gonna, the stores are going to be closed. The town is going to flood because Houston is famous for flooding. And I had no idea exactly where she lives. It's, she was very lucky. Purely by luck, she happened to choose an apartment complex that didn't flood. But, you know, power was out there for a week for, because of one of the storms. She had her camping stove. And she said the food was a little boring because, the, you know, she didn't have a huge amount in the house. But she didn't go hungry. You know, and that's a story that you really should take to heart. That that you may have friends who can call you and say, "Hey, there's this thing that's coming your way. You might want to be aware of it." And you need to at least thank them, even if you know that that's mm -hmm. coming. But this friend who, with a little bit of forewarning, made sure she had enough food and water in her apartment, that she had her camping stove that she could cook on. As she said, it was boring, but she didn't go hungry. <laughs> you can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications because we're going to be doing a lot more stuff. We have yeah. a ton of things going on. I have an awful lot of editing to do because yeah. we've got a lot of stuff that we've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and more to do. I got a list for when we get back that's like, that long. <laughs> Only that long? Yeah. That's <laughs> only because my arms don't go any farther. <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> yes, right. I have a problem for me to do anyway. So until next time, bye. bye. Ding. Ding. Keep brainstorming. Stupid alerts. Anyway, <laughs> obviously we do. And we get alerted by yes, that your was watch. Just, that was a standard alert. I haven't figured out how to reduce the number of alerts. It's better to get too many than not get the right ones. Yeah, well, I've been trying to, I've been trying to get them to not give me sports alerts because I'm like, I don't really care what the Diamondbacks are doing. I don't care what the Orioles are doing. I don't care. I'm not a sports fan. What can I say, you know? You say goodbye, Irene. Yeah. Bye. Bye.